Yes, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Welcome once more. It's Retro Spectrum. It's a new month and it's a new mega game from the histories. The Crash smashes the wires, mega games and everything else. Because it is time to look at one of the absolute greats. Now, Spectrum fans know Dizzy. Everybody does. You've got Jet Set Willy, who, as we've seen recently, made the jump to Vic 20 and back again. Thanks to Alan Jervey. Uh, you might be familiar with people like Monty Moore, like Technician Ted. All names that are recognised in the spectrum with game titles and stuff that was just wonderful. But there's one game that stands above them all. One of those games that is so memorable that even now its mention will bring people to tears when they look back and remember the impact that this had. It filled magazines for months with letters and debate, and if you thought the issues with the Tetris licensing were as complicated and convoluted, well, it's nothing compared to what we're about to look at here. But first, because as some of you will not know the scene, let's set the scene. Um, because we have a name here that is triple-barreled and not needed. Anybody can put the word advanced in front of a game. Especially if you're with Codemasters. <laughs> Advanced, advanced. You never saw beginners pub fruit trivia machine simulator, did you? It was always an advanced one. There was never a normal one or a beginner's one. But you also had simulator as well. Simulator was that sort of, well, let's put it at the back of everything. Well, everything's a simulation. That's the whole point of being a computer. So both, if everything is advanced and everything is a simulation, you don't need to call it that. You can just call it ATV. You don't need to call it advanced ATV simulator. Um, I mean, they tried a couple of times, Twin Turbo V8 wasn't advanced Twin Turbo V8 simulation, so that that's all fine there. But we're talking about something now where advanced really does apply, because it's using game mechanics that even now, 30 years later, are still being used in things like Animal Crossing. We're talking about a really good use of the word simulator, where everything is hyper-realistic, and that same level of excitement and energy you would get doing this thing in the real world is available for you in the game as well. It's it, it is so confident in what it does with its 48k. And yes, it is just in 48k that it doesn't even need a splash screen. It just needs to go, here's the game screen, here's the graphics you're going to play with, here's the absolute realism that you're going to get. And that is what we're going to do now. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who have never seen this before, this is Advanced Lawnmower Simulator. One of the finest, most impactful games you will ever find on the ZX Spectrum. That's it. Drink that in. Grass. Cut grass. Your dad looking at you outside of the house to make sure that you're doing the job properly. The sun beaming down from the sky. Social distancing because there's nobody within two metres of you. But look at that. So advanced for its time. Anyway, let's boot this up uh, on the Spectrum. Uh, and get it up and running. So we'll just uh, flip back. We'll be in 48k mode on this. And bring us in there. It does belie its power with this opening screen, by the way. Lawnmower Simulator. It didn't need the advanced. It did come later with the marketing, but in a sense, that's because it had to, because everything else was advanced. So if you didn't go advanced, you were seen as being the beginner. And nobody's going to buy a beginner lawnmower simulator, are they? Um, it's called a demo. <laughs> there we go. Anyway. Where are we at? Um, the powerful and accurate lawn mowing simulation. Choose from several different machines and go get that grass. Uh, now, obviously with, with these games back in the 80s, you didn't always get the machine that was actually written up there. Look, Campari Grassmaster. Look, everybody knows that's Ferrari, okay? It's it's a bright red lawn mower. It's got flowing lines. There's flames coming out of the tyre. It's got a German driver uh, in the front seat who thinks he can do far better than he's actually doing. But you can't call it Ferrari. I mean, there is one license in here, um, and it's the next one, but Campari... Is, is all you get. DEF Turfomatic. Now, that's the one there. Of course, it's a nod towards Lamborghini, who originally made tractors. Here, we're using the DAF, which uh, I believe Gardensoft actually originally had it for the first truck driving simulator. Uh, so they just moved the license over. And it's a great big beast. This has got a lot of power behind it, a lot of pulling power. It doesn't necessarily go, it's not necessarily the fastest lawnmower, but it's the one that, you know, you that's the one where when you hit the tree stumps, you can just ignore them because it's just going to plow straight through and flatten them and get you the nice 
flat sod and you're going to be away there. Acme Mega Cut 3000 and Acme Lone as well, but the, the Mega Cut 3000, as we all know, um, was what inspired the weapons in Doom. Um, you thought the BFD 9000 was to do with, you know, big guns and that thing in Aliens or something. But no, it wasn't. It was from this, because this is the game where it just says, you know what, you can have variable weapons. And the Mega Cut is exactly what you would think it would be. You point it at the grass, you pull the trigger, fires blades out in all directions, and you just see green smoke and dust flying all the way through your garden and of course it was 3000 there because that's the number of blades you can hit in one hit and they bumped it up in doom because that's what doom did with everything the acme lawn ace is actually the more more uh, coyote like uh lawnmower uh, with this one it is it has a really really rubbish turning circle uh, once it starts moving, it doesn't really stop. You can drive this one off a cliff and it'll keep going and come off the cliff at the other side. Um, so you really, that's the one where you can go really fast in one level. You can't get around the corners to the rest of the gun. That's where the problem is uh, on that one. Flymore Grasham, that's the one that caused a lot of the legal problems. Uh, because, as you can see here, Flymore, well, much like Daft, we've, we've got the branding here. But the problem is they withdrew the branding halfway through because Flymores are orange. Uh, and in the game, you don't have orange. They actually made this a little more magenta. And much as we all love magenta, it wasn't orange with the black handles. Even if you did have orange as a colour, you can have orange and black hand and green, you, you would have colour flash there. So flying them all, and the team behind that got really, really upset. And it's a shame, really, because this is a great lawnmower. First of all, it's the first uh, electric-powered lawnmower you get. You, you start off in the pa patio with uh, a diesel engine, a uh, little... Uh, motor going through. So flying was the first time you get electric. You do have to deal with the cable, so you can't, you've got to watch your path and you can't get tied up around the rhododendrons and everything. But you can go anywhere you like and it's really good at the turning circuit. It's nice and light to push, so you get a lot further in the game. Personally, it is the starter motor and you've got to be really careful when you get past about level four for the tree stumps because the fly mode just, that just kills it. So you've, that takes a bit more finesse, but you can get really far in the game with that one. Uh, Patio Spread Out, we're going to start with that one, because it's, it's the starter lawnmower, uh, and it's the one where you start to build up your funds so you can get the other ones fixed and repaired and serviced, and you can start getting, you buying uh, bits for your garden, because once you buy your mum the rhododendrons, you get a lovely look in the garden, and you've got to be careful around them, but if you do cut around them, massive, massive bonus in your pocket money as it comes through. Now, Patio Spread Out, it's working well. Yeah, of course it is. It's the first level. So there we go. M to motor, M to disengage. Okay. Any key to start. Off we go. Right then. Look at that. I mean, the house is fantastic. As I said, your dad's at the top keeping an eye on you. You just love the idea if he just occasionally waves to you whenever you've done a good job. Sun is shining down here. Nobody within two meters of you has already mentioned. And we have a garden full of grass. So let's just engage the motor and get ourselves going now. When you start playing it, you realise just how sensitive the motor control is. So you've got to basically just get that rhythm of just starting and going and pushing it and pulling it back so that you can just move through the glass easily. Like there's kind of a bit of a stretch to that. You've just got to focus on getting the rhythm. All of the lawn, I mean, the first lawnmowers are really sensitive. As I said, when you get back up to the daff, you find it's a really, really lumbering hulk of a lawnmower. And there's a star and it just it goes off again um so you've got to be really careful with how you draw the lines but here with the initial one more you can get a good pattern going you can get that nice square look without too much effort uh sitting on the ground making it a bit like one of those football pitches uh, and everything you don't really need to keep an eye on the engine on engine the diesel levels uh, yeah it's a diesel it's, it's the 80s okay uh and the oil levels they kind of just care of themselves but it's good to keep them topped up once you finish every garden and of course we're in the first garden here so we don't have the level of hazards that we have on the later levels we don't have the moles popping up out of the ground just to get a bit off the rhythm there uh, you don't have the moles popping up in the ground you, you have not bought the rhododendrons yet the tree stumps aren't coming through they tend to come through in about autumn time uh, and you get that as the, the sky turns a slightly darker shade a good practice here just keeping the rhythm up keeping it nice and gentle and making sure that you get a good pattern on the grass get yourself a good bit of pocket money that will allow you to either 
service is slower and go up by the next. Depends how aggressive you want to be. I tend to be aggressive when playing, so just move straight up to the fly mill um, at the next time there. So we've got corned beef sandwich. Excellent idea. You always get corned beef sandwich. <laughs> Certainly not in the first one. Okay, right then. So let's uh, head over and get ourselves. Oh, this is the demo version, sorry. Uh, so, when you were playing the real version, this is when you begin your pocket money from your dad and you can head off down to the uh, lawnmower shop Q&B and I uh, said either buy the kit to service, the, in this case, the patio or to upgrade to the fly mode. Now, if I was normally playing, I would upgrade to the fly mode at this point because two, three and four levels, just really easy to stream through. You can pretty much get maximum money on each three levels. It gets a bit more difficult then when you get to level four. As I said, that's the one where you start having to try and avoid things. Rhododendrons, easy to get around with the flying bolt stumps, will completely destroy the engine. So, yeah, got to just watch as you as you go around. Yourself. But anyway, that does let you get through uh, everything. Um, but let me just run this again, and uh, we'll, we'll play it here when I'm just going out of rhythm. And this is, this is the fun part here, because if you don't do very well and you can just see you get this stop and start. It's probably worth worth just keeping an eye, as I said, uh, on, on the management side of things from Gardensoft is they didn't stick this out on sale. They should have done it. It's a 995 query. I mean, Sim City was 14.95, and it doesn't have that many extra manage options uh, over and above this. So it clearly could have been a 995, but you're talking, what, 1988 in this one-ish? About that, yeah. And the market's starting to go bit skewed for the Spectrum games, so yeah, you could go on a cover man cassette as they did here with YS45, hence, hence that, and you got a guaranteed lump sum. You, you know, it was a sort of, do you gamble and try and get more sales, or do you just take the money that's on the table? And for, for a lot of companies at that point in time, taking the money on the table was a good deal. Especially some you know, companies like Houston, for example, the, the money that would get brought in from cover tapes would be enough to keep them afloat for a couple more years and then they would be bought out and bought out and they became rare and epic games and blah 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 blah. Um, there's a lovely video online about the cover tape was, I will try and link to it, it's not by me. Um, I think it's Chini Vision, but I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, slide in that one. So, they, they put this out on the cover tape, they got the money and that allowed them to carry on the developments of the later games. You, you didn't see much from them, but their chorus, as I said, had a huge influence. There's a, a lot of the weaponry and graphics work here transferred over to Doom, for example. Uh, you had a fair number go over to things like the Amiga and the ST and the 16-bit games. And, yeah, you see there, but just because you, you, couldn't, you couldn't write that down again. I think that's the only flaw about it. But, yeah, that was an erratic cut. You saw that the, uh, the sort of going through the, the rhythm wasn't quite there. Uh, so you've got to get that all balanced off. But yeah, the team that worked on this went on to do great things, have influenced the rest of the, the games industry. Um, you, that whole sort of start off something, build up, build up, build up. You'd seen management games like that before, Lemonade Stand and such like. But this is where it really, really did get nailed down. It's the first time all those elements got in there. There's a wonderful legacy inside this game. Uh, and it quite rightly, uh, it's... It was the YS Mega game. I don't think it crashed Smash. And I think if they did crash, we'd like, well, we're still not going to publish it because it's from the other magazine. Uh, but it would have been. It would have been. i got to go in again. Uh, look, uh, as always with these things, if you've got a copy of it, go grab your emulator, uh, fire it up. If you've got it on the original Spectrum, even better because you, you, you get that same sort of overheating, warm engine uh, feeling that you get as well. Uh, right, okay, let's just see if I can get her. Nice rhythm going on this one. Uh, just a second, let the oil pressure build up on this one, actually. That might be the key. God, it's ages since I've played this. Okay, right, okay, we'll try it with the faster oil pressure. Right, uh, I'm Ewan Spence. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, RetrospectumGaming.com uh, and you'll ask the LTT YouTube.com slash RetrospectumGaming. We're on Facebook as well, the same, and URL.com slash RetrospectumGaming. Uh, pop in there, leave your comments, thoughts, remember the time that you first played Advanced Lawnmower Simulator, you remember the thrush of the cut grass coming through the screen at you, the thrill of the pocket money and that trip down to Q&B? Let me know in the comments. I think I'm... Uh, okay, got to focus on this one.